My real job today is to introduce someone who understands the entrepreneur ecosystem as well as anyone I know. Marina Hatsopoulos is not necessarily a household name in Athens, but she is in the United States. This person embodies as much as anyone I know living with a purpose. Not only loving life, but using her skills and her talent and her time to have funded and supported countless entrepreneurs. She also is an inspiration for the MIT Entrepreneur Center. I don't know where she finds all the time that she has, but she's going to great effort to be with us today. So a special welcome to Marina Hetzelos. Um, this is the second uh, year that the Hellenic Initiative has put on Venture Fair, which is only one activity among many um, that the organization is involved in to help startups in Greece. So I'm on the advisory board of the Ag Incubator and MIT Enterprise Forum Greece, and um, both organizations get a lot of support from the Hellenic Initiative and are very grateful for that support. Um, and I love to see that. Greeks love to do their own thing and sometimes operate in a silo. And one thing that has been so heartening is to see all these organizations working together toward a common goal, which is to help drive entrepreneurship in Greece. And what's the point? Why do that? Um, the point of these efforts is to take people who are born in this beautiful country, educated at these top-notch universities, both here and overseas, and who want to live in a country with a high quality of life. We want to keep them here by creating an entirely new category of employment opportunities that were previously unavailable. Greece is at a critical moment in its history, as we all know. The economic crisis depleted an entire swath of jobs without replacing them with anything else. Whenever something bad happens, we as humans or collectively as a society have a choice as to whether to complain, to become bitter, or to make a change. Entrepreneurship has the potential to radically change the face of Greece, and this is why I spend my time doing this, because I can see this crisis as actually an opportunity for Greece to become something very different than what it's been in the past. Surprisingly, the elements of a successful startup ecosystem are already in place. A strong technical university system in the country, in addition to very high levels of college matriculation abroad, is churning out well-educated developers, researchers, and engineers. High youth unemployment means this ready pool of talent is willing to work for lower wages in exchange for equity. That's just what you want in an entrepreneur. Um, and the best part is they're not being poached by Google or Apple. And I tell you this, as an entrepreneur trying to hire engineers, it's impossible. When you're in Boston or Silicon Valley, you've got these huge companies that are paying ridiculous amounts of money, and it's very hard as a startup to be able to compete against them. In Greece, this notion of turnover doesn't even exist. It's, it's unheard of. You don't have to worry about that. You have loyalty. With limited access to capital, these startups are driven toward early profitability. They have no choice. And sustainable business models, which are fundamentals of a strong startup. And it's really funny, I have to tell you a story. Um, when we were doing our startup Z Corporation back in the 90s, um, and we would get hire these kids out of business school, and uh, we would talk about, you've got to get to profitability. We were on this mission to get to profitability. And I remember one of the business school students out of Harvard saying, you really don't want to talk about profitability. That's like a bad word. The P word is a bad word. And now, the, you know, everything's come full circle. So now everyone's talking about lean startups. Well, these guys understand what a lean startup is. So they're ahead of the game. Um, and that is what builds a fundamentally strong company. Greeks are natural entrepreneurs, and the environment is finally becoming friendly to entrepreneurship. We have incubators and accelerators, such as Venture Garden in Athens and Thessaloniki. 
research centers like the Monquitos and Coralia, um, and legislation has removed some of the barriers to entrepreneurship. Startup competitions such as the Hellenic Entrepreneurship Award provide a necessary catalyst to burgeoning community of entrepreneurs. And venture funds are eager to invest in these promising startups. One thing you notice about entrepreneurs anywhere in the world is their sunny outlook, but nowhere is it more striking than in Greece, where there's so much despair over the, com uh, over the country's future. These guys have true entrepreneurial spirit. Nothing keeps them down. And whenever you talk about, oh, how's the bureaucracy in Greece? How are you dealing with capital controls? You know what? They roll their eyes and they move on to tell you their plans for the future. These entrepreneurs see opportunity and they see a bright future for themselves, for their startups, and for the country. Broadly speaking, I've seen two types of startups here. One is IT startups, where there's a mobile app that can be used to improve the efficiency of existing processes. The second type is based on uh, scientific research coming out of labs at universities <coughs> or research centers. These can be new products that haven't existed before, and they may take longer to develop. Entrepreneurship is in many ways a numbers game. You start with a thousand crazy ideas, and that leads to a hundred startups, and of those, maybe a dozen survive, and a couple of them are home runs, and a few of them are okay. And so what you gotta do is you gotta fill that pipeline. And one thing I see is that even though Greece is at the front end of it, we are filling the pipeline with very high quality startup ideas. Eventually, these will convert to liquidity events uh, in the coming years. When I was an entrepreneur, I had many others to look to for advice, mentoring, investment, connections, or partnerships. There were many who I admired and I aspired to emulate. In a generation with a smattering of newly minted millionaires coming out of this group, young graduates will aspire to get a technical education so that they can start their own businesses. The ones who succeed will invest in other startups, start new ones, and mentor younger entrepreneurs. This becomes a virtuous cycle that can transform an entire culture from one of passive entitlement to one, to one of active drive toward tangible goals by the creation of real value. And that's what's gonna change the Greek economy. So why should you as an investor invest in Greek startups? Greece has competitive advantages in agriculture, food, tourism, IT, and logistics. The advantage of IT is the very low level of capital required. So these startups can get going with a shoestring budget and start competing with companies around the world very quickly. Burn rates are ridiculously low, so entire teams can operate with very little investment. Your capital has huge leverage here in Greece. One euro of investment in a Greek startup is equivalent to five dollars in a startup in Silicon Valley. And Greece is still undiscovered, which means valuations are actually reasonable. And I can say this coming from Boston, where valuations are ridiculous. To give you some context, the first, and this, uh, I'm going to give you some information right now, which I hope you will keep between us. Um, the first professional venture investor in Greece was Open Fund, which generated 7.5 times returns on its first fund and is currently generating 36% internal rate of return on its second fund. How often can you do something with such great impact that has the possibility of making you such generous returns? It's a win-win. Nobody wants a handout. These guys are not looking for a handout. The real impact of the investments that THI is making in the startup ecosystem and the investment that you make directly in these startups is the empowerment it provides for individuals in Greece to take control over their own destiny. In a generation, we could be looking back at this time period, and instead of lamenting the crisis, we might be awestruck by the new Greece that we've created. We might forget to remind our friends about all the great successes of the ancient Greeks because we're too busy looking toward the future. On that note, I welcome you to listen to these pitches. I think we're going to have an exciting day in front of us. Thank you.